The Great Barrier Reef is now in the middle of its sixth mass coral bleaching event. It's really quite a surprise and a shock to see mass bleaching occurring this year because this year has been a La Nina summer. We used to need a strong El Nino to trigger coral bleaching. Unfortunately, due to global warming, that's no longer the case. We were lucky to have a 14 year gap between two earlier bouts of bleaching in 2002 and 2016. Those gaps are really important because they're the window of opportunity for the corals to recover. But in the past few years, we've seen severe bleaching in 2016, again in 2017. That was the first time we've ever seen mass bleaching in two consecutive summers. Then we had a three-year gap to 2020 and now a two-year gap to 2022. Those gaps are way too short for a half-decent recovery to take place. In 2016, we measured a 30% decline in the percent cover of corals. That's huge. At the scale of the Great Barrier Reef, it's a much bigger loss of corals than any previous disturbances like a Category 5 cyclone, for example. So the so-called disturbance regime of the Great Barrier Reef has shifted hugely due to anthropogenic heating and the Great Barrier Reef as a consequence is declining. We can anticipate more and more of these bleaching events as global warming continues. By about 2030, we'll probably see bleaching occur on average every other year. We're very, we're very close to that frequency now. And by the mid 2040s, the climate modelers are predicting that we'll see bleaching occurring in every year under a business as usual greenhouse gas emissions scenario. So there's no time to lose. If we want to save the Great Barrier Reef as a functional coral reef, the world has to sharply reduce greenhouse gas emissions as soon as possible.